after the Sabbath at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and, going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were, were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the woman, do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, he is risen just as he said, come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, he has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the woman hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Amen. The Sabbath has ended, so let us wander to the tomb with Mary Magdalene and some other women. I'm remembering that the Sabbath was, is a gift from God. It's the day of rest. It's the day to trust that God is sufficient in and for all things. It is that day of the week when they would have had time, more time than on any other day of the week, to wonder about the events they'd witnessed. A day spent wondering about the future they'd hoped for. The one they had hoped would bring redemption, Jesus, has been crucified. He was their teacher, the prophet, the one who was powerful in word and deed. And now he lies in a tomb. Surely their hearts are sorrowful. How well did those who had seen Jesus die on the cross, how well did they rest on that dark Sabbath? the hopes and fears of all the years of waiting gone, or so it seemed, until the women go to the tomb. They are startled and they are fearful. There's a lot of fear in this story of stories. They experience an earthquake and encounter an angel who brings words of comfort. Do not be afraid. Those comforting words of hope. Do not be afraid. I know why you're here. You're looking for Jesus looking in the place where he was laid to rest. We don't find hope in the dead places. I don't suppose we even find hope at the empty tomb, for others in this story have asked, tell us where you've put him. No, we find hope because he has risen just as he said he would. No need to steal a body, no need to make up a story. Now they know their weeping has been for a night. There is joy on this resurrection morning. Who would have thought that a wander to the place of the dead would lead to such joy and wonder? From a Sabbath filled with pain and grief to a new day filled with joy, with new possibilities, a new day filled with tremendous hope, good news for all people, just as it was promised. And I'm wondering about how this hope offered to us in Jesus, comforts us in our darkest times. I'm wondering, can I, can you, see beyond the problems and anxieties of day to the hope of the resurrection? I wonder what it means to you and to me that there is coming another day when there will be no more death or mourning or sorrow or pain, a day when God will wipe the tears from our eyes, a day when all things will be made new. Just at the darkest moment, the light breaks through. How true are the words of the psalmist. Weeping may endure for a night, but a shout of joy comes in the morning. In the words of an Easter hymn, then came the morning. Shadows vanished before the sun. Death had lost and life had won, for morning had come. May this day be for you a day of great joy, for the Saviour of the world is risen. He is risen indeed.